Good morning, Rams, and welcome to the first ever edition of Have You Heard. My name is Spencer Cohen, here with uh, my partner Justin Sabagal. And in today's show, you can expect an in-depth analysis of all of our fall sports teams, coaches analysis, a bunch of player interviews, and even a sit-down interview with the herd master himself, Ben Simon. So you may be asking yourself, what is Have You Heard? Let me explain. Over the course of the 2019 to 2020 school year, we hope to bring you behind the scenes of the Heights Town High School by focusing on our athletics, clubs, and other school events. We will mainly be focused on our students, and we can hope this can be a way for you guys to find out more about the different aspects of our students here at Heights Town High School. Today's episode will be our fall sports showcase, but throughout the year we will be focusing on a whole variety of Heights Town activities, not just athletics. But first, Let's start with boys soccer. After a slow start to the season, the Rams have won some recent games to bring their overall record to 5-10-1, with seven losses by one goal, which is kind of unfortunate. One highlight was a golden goal overtime winner by senior captain Alan Gomez against West Windsor Plainsboro South that gave the boys a 1-0 win. And recently on senior night, Alan scored again in overtime uh, to help the boys win against Trenton. The team also has been helped greatly by goalkeeper Jake Forrest, who has 75 saves on the season. We talked to coach George Wolkowitz. <clears throat> Last year we finished just under 500 and did not qualify for states. We are hoping to score more, more goals this season as a, eight of our 11 losses were by one goal. Senior leaders Jake Forrest, Joe and Mike Ziza, Matt Palacios and Jose Rodriguez and Brandon Sagbo will be charged with the responsibility of working with our underclassmen in order to obtain our goals of moving deep into the state and Mercer County tournaments. For our first player interview of the year, we go out to the turf to talk to senior captain Alan Gomez. Hello, I'm here with Alan Gomez on the boys soccer team. Alan, how are you doing today? Great, Mr. Cohen, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing very well. Um, Alan, uh, last year, the team lost a lot of its senior leaders. How do you and your co-captains plan to uh, fill this role? Uh, it was a devastating loss with the 2019 seniors. Um, we felt bad because they were very uh, sad and emotional after we lost in the MCT uh, second round. Uh, our co-captains are working really hard and uh, we're all pushing forward to do a, get an MCT title this year for the team. Very nice. Uh, next question. How does the crowd impact how the team plays? The crowd is a huge uh, impact for us. Uh, like seeing our families and friends and staff members watching us play just motivates us to do better every time we see them. Nice. Um, and finally, you had a great golden goal overtime winner against West Windsor South um, around a week ago. Who on the team had the best dance moves after that game? I'm not gonna lie, it was me. I was going crazy, you know. It's going crazy in the locker room, but it was a great win, and it was fun. It was a fun experience. You heard it here. Back to the studio. The team will be back in action this upcoming week in their push for MCTs. If you're free, make sure to go watch and support Allen and the Rams. Uh, and next up, we have field hockey. Um, with a 7-8 and eight record, the team has had some great wins as of late, comfortably beating both Petty and Nottingham. We talked to coach Edward Larkin. <clears throat> Last year we had a 5-11-2 record and look to improve on that this year with a very young core group of talent led by our senior captains Katie Bertrand, Isabella Lazaro, and Anna Chico. Many of our varsity players are sophomores and are looking to build a chemistry this year that will be successful now and moving forward to the next couple years. This team has an Instagram page that also has many updates on games and accomplishments. That's at HHS underscore field hockey. We got the chance to go talk to senior captain Anna Chico. Hello, I'm here with Anna Chico on the uh, girls field hockey team. Anna, with a team run Instagram account and after practice trips to Rita's, how important is team chemistry for the team? Okay, so overall I think team chemistry is really important, especially to a team that has three teams, the freshman team, the JV team, and the varsity team. And I think a whole um, Instagram account really brings all the three teams together and everybody feels a part of the group. Also, team trips, like you said, to like Rita's and having pasta parties and pizza parties really just brings unity to the whole team and honestly makes us play better in the end. 
Very nice. Um, and second, uh, what are your goals for the team, and how do you guys plan to accomplish them? Um, I know probably everybody else is expecting me to say that we'd want to win MCTs, go on, live as legends, but I think honestly this year our goal is to really just have a positive impact on the community and have um, people want to be Rams and have people want to join the field hockey team and also have people look upon us with positivity. So I think that's honestly our goal for this year. Well, thank you for being on the show and back to you in the studio. The team has some upcoming games, including Princeton and Steiner, and um, they will look to improve their record in hope of qualifying for states. Next up, we got cross country. Both the boys and girls team are above 500, with the boys posting a 5-2 and two record, while the girls are at 6-1. and one. We talked to captains Mr. DeLisi and Mr. Edwards, who gave us their coaches' summaries. Um, so the girls' cross-country team is off to a great start on the 2019 season, led by a group of juniors and specifically lead runner Shruti Submaranian. The Rams have jumped out to a 5-1 and one record. The girls are looking to be competitive against the heavy hitters in cross country this year, Princeton and the West Windsors, and are making some noise in the CVC. The boys, cross, the boys cross country team are looking to replace their leader this year, and Cameron Watkins and Kush Bott are stepping up nicely. The boys have begun this season 4-2 and two and are getting stronger and stronger as the season progresses. We talked to captains Cameron Watkins and Trudy Subramanian. Hello. I'm at cross-country practice on a Wednesday afternoon with junior captains Shruti Subramanian and Cameron Watkins. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for having us. All right, uh, let me dive right in here. You have both been varsity long-distance runners since you were freshmen, so you know a thing or two about hard work. Let me ask you for my first question, how far do you guys run on an average practice? Um, well, it depends, depends on what we're doing on the day, but you, a lot of the times it's probably about five miles a day. Five miles? Wow, that is a lot of running. A lot more running than most people can do, including me. All right, that adds up to my follow-up question here. How far do you guys run on meet days? Um, usually we would do a mile warm-up, and then we do the 3.1 or the 5K race, and then after that we would do one to two miles of a cool down. Okay, and so all of your races are 5K? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Uh, now for my final question here is – when you're running these long distance runs, what is going through your mind? What are you thinking? <laughs> um, what are you thinking during um, your runs? Sometimes I blank out. Um, I'll try to think of a song, but usually I can only remember one line, so it gets really annoying. And <laughs> that's, yeah. it's, a, it's a good time to, uh, to kind of just let your mind wander and think. Nice. Works. That's good. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for giving me the inside scoop on cross country, and I'll send it back to the studio. Wow, that's a lot of running. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again, and uh, good luck to the rest of the season. Next up we have girls soccer. Girls soccer has a record of 6-7-1 with recent shutouts over both Ewing and Hamilton West. Most importantly was their win on senior night against Steiner, where the girls broke a 1-1 tie with 29 seconds left to lift them to a 2-1 win. Let's go on and talk to senior captain Sarah Kano. Hello, I'm here with Varsity Girls Soccer Captain Sarah Kano. Sarah, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. All right, so my first question here is, it's your senior season. Do you have any specific goals that you want to achieve? Um, as a goal for the team, we want to make it to states and get past the second round since that hasn't happened in a few years. Awesome, awesome. All right, for my next question, um, do you have any matchups or games that you're looking forward to this season? Any schools that you're just itching to play? We're really excited to play Notre Dame because that's a big school rival. And then we're really excited to play for our senior night, Steiner, because they've come out as a really strong team this year. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season and uh, send it back to the studio. MTTs in this upcoming week. Next up, we got girls tennis. The tennis team recently took a respected second place at MCTs and have a strong 12-4 and record on the season. We went out and talked to Avnika Nowarpowerju, a senior leader on the team, about the season. Welcome back. Today we have Avnika here, first singles tennis player. Uh, thank you for joining us on the show. You're welcome. All right, here's my first question. After winning back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back MCT championships, what do you feel is the next step for your team? 
Um, well, we got to focus on tomorrow, which is our final day of MCTs, and try to win as many matches as possible because most of us are in the semifinals. And we also have to focus on states, so I feel like it'll be a good season. That's great. And my next question here is, what has made you so successful, not only this year, but in years prior? Um, I think that our like bond and our com like our communication is really great. We cheer each other up when we're sad or like upset about a match or we're, when we're down in the match. So it's a great thing in that we really know how to communicate with each other. That's great. And thank you again and good luck to you and your team for tomorrow and the rest of the season. The girls have some of their finals, sta state's finals matches going on right now and we wish them good luck as they advance. Next up we have Cheer. Um, they are leading the herd every Friday night, and this is what Coach Jennifer Flynn has to say. <clears throat> the 2019 Fall Sideline Varsity Cheerleading Team started their season at the Pine Forest Cheerleading Camp in Pennsylvania, where they were able to work with UCA, Universal Cheerleaders Association, instructors. While at camp, they learned new skills, earned multiple superior ribbons, and took first place for their spirit cheer performance. Upon returning home, the cheerleaders began working on the choreography for their competition season and cheering at all HHS varsity football games. As our fall season progresses, we hope to increase our school spirit and encourage everybody to rumble with us at the games. We went out to the turf to talk to senior captain Cecilia Tabor. Hi, I'm here with Cecilia on the cheer team. Um, Cecilia, so the cheer team goes to a summer camp for uh, three days. Um, and why is this so important for the girls? So it's definitely a really great experience because this is the first time a lot of us work together and it's our new team, our new season, so we get to go and work with a bunch of professionals and you're in a cabin for three days, so obviously you're seeing each other so much, so it's a really great bonding experience. And also it's really great for us because the coaches and everyone we have there are also the people who judge us later in the year for our competitions, so it's a great way for them to get us up to par with every other team and make sure we're skilled enough for our competition season. Very nice. Um, and second, um, going out in front of the whole school on Friday nights, um, what is that experience like for you? It's definitely a great experience because we get to be a part of the school community. Um, there's definitely a lot of camaraderie in the fact that, um, you know, everyone likes to be cheered on. We like to be cheered on by the student section and the fact that we're able to cheer another team on. I think that really builds up a strong bond and it's something that we really enjoy doing because it's just giving back and making sure other teams at our school feel important. Well, thank you and back to you. Thank you to Cecilia, and you can watch Cheer in Action every Friday night at the football games and during their winter competitions. From Cheer, we next have football. The football team heads into this week with a 1-5 record, um, but with some very close and difficult losses as of late. Here's what Coach Ryan Fullen had to say. Coming off a 3-6 and six season, Highsound is looking to improve on their record and win their division. We are led by Captains Jared Justice, Jaden Childs, Kyle Reese, and Jason Coleman. We are buoyed on defense by Teo Isadari and offensively by sophomore quarterback Danny Wershing. We have a big game this Friday against Northern Burlington, so everyone make, make sure you come out and support your Rams for homecoming. We got the chance to go talk to sophomore QB Danny Wershing. Hello, I'm here with Danny Wershing, starting QB for the Heightstown Rams. Danny, you guys have had some tough losses as of late with uh, Allentown and Lawrence. How do you guys plan to win these close games in the future? Yeah, we just have to start better. We haven't started our best, and we're a second-half team, and we got to just bring that intensity to the first half. Good. Um, and second question, um, especially as a starting QB, how does the crowd impact how the team plays? Yeah, the crowd gives us energy and always makes us play better when we're at home, and it's just great knowing that we got the best student section in the CBC behind us. Well, thank you for being on the show. Good luck. And back to you. The Rams will be back in action this Friday to take on North Burlington at home for homecoming. Make sure that if you can go, pop out to these games because as Danny said, the crowd makes a huge difference. And for our final interview, we have a studio interview with her leader, Ben Simon. Hello, and welcome back. Today we have the leader of the High Sound Herd, Benjamin Simon, joining us for today. Ben, can I call you Ben? Of course. Welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Excited to talk a little Rams with you guys. Go Rams. Fantastic. Now my first question for you is, what is the herd? Oh, the Heightstown herd. So the, the Heightstown herd um, is pretty much a student-run organization where we try and promote school spirit, you know, Ram pride. Um, and it's, it's basically a way of getting all the students involved and 
you know, showing everybody that, you know, we support each other because of how hard people work and trying to get, trying to inform people on different events where they can go show their Ram Pride. So Ben, why is a sense of community at Heightstown so important? Oh yeah, well community is basically everything that we're trying to, you know, encourage in Heightstown. Um, because, you know, there, it's important to go out to things because we work so hard, you know, in everything that we're doing here at Heightstown. I see it every day. Um, and so to, to show those people that are working so hard that, you know, you, they have your support um, can really just give them pretty much that extra edge to go out there and, and do all the wonderful things that they're already doing. Um, and, you know, it's all about making Heightstown a better place and, you know, having a great community can really help improve everybody's, you know, life around you. And that's what it's all about. Nice, nice. Now, Ben, everyone here at Heightstown knows that you're one of the most school-spirited students here. <laughs> Why do you enjoy like, going to these sporting events? Yeah, well, I play two sports. I play uh, basketball and baseball. And so to have, you know, people show up to those types of games um, and just see them every week, you know, I, you work really hard when you're trying to put out the best product that you can. And so having those people um, show up every week really helps, you know, motivate me because I'm not, not only not only playing for myself, but they enjoy watching what I'm doing. And so to know that and to kind of show that, you know, I kind of see that and I want to work harder for them, it's just, it makes me feel like, well, I got to return the favor now and I got to go out to all the sporting events I can because if that's how hard it's making me work, then I know that, you know, the other Rams that are playing athletics and doing all different things, different events, it's certainly, um, you know, making them kind of work harder too. And that's only improving everybody. So why not do it? Cool. So, so Ben, where can we find more information on the herd? Oh, hi. At H Town Herd on Twitter, the letter H Town Herd on Twitter. Um, yeah, we tweet out a bunch of different things, trying to get people involved, and that's what it's all about. We're off to a great start this year, building a community. Last year, the community was great, and we're just trying to continue that. So, Ben, thank you for being on the show, um, and we'll, we'll back to the studio. Go Rams. Thank you to Ben. Two weekends ago was the Stephanie Berman 5K run and 1K walk and it was the biggest turnout for the event ever, with just under 100 people participating in the run. It was great to see all of the Heightstown students and athletes out and supporting the great cause. The homecoming nominees are now live. Check your emails to vote for who you, you want to be your homecoming king and queen. The queen nominees include Sarah, Vanessa, Alexia, Grace, and Kayla, and the king nominees include Jaden, Jacob, Alan, Ryan, and Mike. We would like to give a big thank you to everyone who helped to make this first ever show of Have You Heard Possible. Um, and this is just the first of many. You can follow us on social media at HHS Have You Heard. We're on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow us to be up to date on when we release our podcasts. And we'll also be doing giveaways and other announcements. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Go Rams.